Far out in the open sea on a perfectly calm day, a dot appears on the horizon. It grows in size as it gets closer, and soon you can see it's a ship. But when you look at it through the spyglass, chills go down your spine. The vessel is in perfect condition and its cargo is on board, but it's completely devoid of people, drifting listlessly along the current. That was what the captain of the Ellen Austin saw in 1881 and what brought his crew so many sorrows. In December of the previous year, the Ellen Austin, a big 210-foot-long ship, left the port of Liverpool to make its trip to New York. The ship was carrying a load of people, hoping to find a better life in the new world. Captain A.J. Griffin took the vessel due southwest for a shorter voyage, and a few weeks into 1881, they found themselves north of the Sargasso Sea, known for its lack of winds and strong circling currents. Ships that got caught in those could lose control and keep on drifting in circles until they were dragged into the center. From there, they'd be incredibly lucky to get back past the currents. But more often than not, they stayed in the desolate desert of the sea forever. Worse still, the area belonged to the notorious Bermuda Triangle, which was already known to take down ships and make them disappear without a trace. The ship's crew were nervous, afraid of being in such a dangerous area so close to a sea that could bring them to a standstill. And ominously, some of the Sargasso Sea's calm must have escaped it, because the Ellen Austin lost its speed one day and fell adrift without the winds. It was fine, though. They had ample provisions and were still on schedule. Captain Griffin was walking around his ship, giving orders in a voice full of calm authority, and both his crew and passengers trusted him completely. But then, the lookout shouted from above that a ship was in sight. And indeed, when the captain looked in the direction the man was pointing, he saw a small schooner moving slowly into view and towards the Ellen Austin. As it came closer, it became apparent that the way the strange vessel moved wasn't right. The captain frowned and examined it through his spyglass. The schooner was untouched, but eerily silent. There wasn't a single soul on board. Derelict ships weren't that rare in the Atlantic at the time, but neither were pirates. Captain Griffin decided to wait and watch. After two days, the schooner was as quiet as always, and Captain finally thought it was fine to move in. He took a small team of sailors and boarded the stranded ship. There was nobody there indeed, but luck seemed to be on Griffin's side. The precious cargo of mahogany wood was still in the holds. The captain returned to the Ellen Austin and ordered his select men to take the smaller ship along to New York. The crew's spirits arose with the prospect of riches awaiting them upon arrival. When the winds blew strong again, the Ellen Austin continued its voyage, with the unnamed vessel tagging along. But after a couple of days, the ships were caught in a powerful storm and got separated. The wind, rain, and waves beat them for several days in a row. When the weather finally cleared, Captain Griffin ordered to find the schooner. They searched for another day until they finally found it adrift, way off the course. Griffin hailed his men on board the smaller ship, but no one answered. A party of sailors went to investigate and returned with their faces white with fear. The whole prize crew went missing in the storm. The captain wasn't one to lose such a valuable find, though, and ordered another team to take control of the schooner. Reluctantly, the sailors obeyed, and the two ships continued their voyage. They agreed to stay as close as possible to one another and ring their bells at set intervals at night to let each other know they were fine. Several nights went all right, with bells ringing reassuringly every hour. But one day, a thick blanket of fog fell on the sea and almost completely blocked their vision. The ships went on regardless and started sounding their bells earlier. When night came, the fog was still there but the bells were the sound of life. Until they stopped. Captain Griffin rang the bell once, then twice. No answer. The crew lit the fires and looked out into the sea intently. But the fog hadn't lifted, and they couldn't see a thing in the swirling abyss beyond the ship's board. 
Nobody could sleep that night, and they waited, in silence, until the break of dawn. The first rays of sun made the fog slowly disperse, and the whole crew went to the edge of the deck with heavy hearts. There was still hope in them, until the last strands of the mist went away, revealing a vast, calm, and most importantly, empty ocean. The nameless schooner was gone, and so was the second team of the Ellen Austin sailors. The ship sailed the rest of the way to New York in grave silence. Once it arrived at the port, the passengers were only too happy to leave the vessel, and no one so much as turned their head as a goodbye. That was the ship's last voyage as the Ellen Austin. That same year, it was sold to a German shipping company and renamed Meta. No one ever found the derelict schooner or the sailors that went missing with it. And that would probably be the end of this mysterious and unresolved story, if it held at least a little bit of the truth. In reality, none of the enigmatic things in the narrative actually happened. The Ellen Austin did indeed leave Liverpool and headed southwest to New York, and its captain was really A.J. Griffin, taking people to the American continent. But from here, the story falls apart. First of all, the ship went way too far to the north to pass the Sargasso Sea so closely. There was simply no reason to make a detour so broad. Even though the westerly winds were strong, it was still faster to take them head-on than to go in a southerly direction. So the Ellen Austin was probably nowhere near the Sargasso Sea and the Bermuda Triangle. Secondly, the triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, it gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So the crew of the Ellen Austin weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. Thirdly, the whole story was told and retold by magazines and mystery-loving personalities with ever-changing details. It first appeared in a newspaper in 1906 and already had the date wrong. The article said the voyage took place in 1891 instead of 1881. Later, the story resurfaced in 1935 on the radio with the wrong name of the captain. It was Baker, not Griffin. The date was also off saying the trip was taken in August 1881, when the Ellen Austin was already renamed Meta. The legend grew upon with other strange details, such as the ship's route from London to Newfoundland, which was never the case. But the final debunking came from the archives of Lloyd's of London, the marine insurance market that keeps all logs of trade and emigration ship routes. The documents there say that on February 1881, the Ellen Austin completed its cross-Atlantic voyage to New York without incident. Captain A.J. Griffin off-boarded the ship with all his crew hale and hearty and declared no loss of hands during the trip. The voyage took over two months because the ship had to fight strong westerly winds pushing it back towards Britain. The crew reported no strange encounters on the way, and the whole thing was as boring as could be. And even the passengers must have been smiling when they stepped on the American soil at last, unaware of the phony baloney story they were about to be a part of.